probability is how often we expect or predict a certain event to occur. It's essentially an educated guess based on mathematics. And it's important to remember that what's probable doesn't always occur. For example, if we were to flip a coin 10 times, we would expect five heads and five tails. But it is definitely possible, although not probable, to flip heads all 10 times. With probability, each trial is independent of the others. So what's happened before won't affect the outcome of what will happen in the future. For example, if we flip a coin and get heads, that has no effect on the next time we flip the coin. And probability success increases with more trials. That is like increasing your sample size, you're going to get better results. There are different ways to express probability. One way is in fraction. And with a fraction, the numerator is the number of events you are looking for, and the denominator is the total number of possibilities. So if, for example, we have 10 marbles in a bag and four of them are blue, we have a four out of 10 chance of getting a blue marble. Or we can reduce that and say two out of five. Percentages are another way to express probability. And for a percentage, you divide out the fraction. And then ratios are a comparison of the likelihood of related events. And genetics, in terms of ratios, uses a very specific format. So when we're doing ratios, the genotypic ratio always has to go in this order. We put how many homozygous dominants we have first, then we say how many heterozygous we have, and then we say how many homozygous recessives we have. Even if you have zero of something, you have to include that as a placeholder in your genotypic ratio. Phenotypic ratio must always be dominant first and then the recessives next. And same thing, you must include zero if you have any as a placeholder. So here's some examples of probability. In mice coat color, black, and we'll use capital B, is dominant over white. So that would be lowercase b. An individual's genotype tells you what alleles the offspring could inherit from their parents. And each parent will only give one allele to their offspring. If an individual's genotype is big B, big B, that means they received a big B from each parent. And they will pass on a big B to all offspring because that's all they have to give them. If an individual's genotype is big B, little b, that means they received a big B from one parent and a little b from the other parent. And when they have offspring, they can either pass a big B or a little b to their offspring. And finally, if an individual's genotype is little b, little b, that means they received a little b from each parent and they will pass on a little b to all of their offspring because that's all they have to give. So for our problems, assume that our P generation, which is our parent generation, the female is heterozygous, big B, little b, and the male is heterozygous, big B, little b. So if we were to complete a Punnett square showing a cross between these two parents, we put one parent's genotype on the top, we put one parent's genotype on the side. It doesn't matter which parent goes in which location on the Punnett square, you'll get the same results either way. And then you fill in the boxes with what intersects in that box. And so here you can see a filled in Punnett square with our two heterozygous parents. So now using that Punnett square, we can list probabilities. 
the probability of having an offspring that's big B, big B would be one fourth or 25%. Because if you look in the boxes, only one of the four show a big B, big B. Probability of getting big B, little b is one half. And that's because two of our four boxes is big B, little b. So two over four can reduce to one half, or you could even say it's 50%. And probability of little b, little b is one fourth, because one of the four boxes is a little b, little b, and that would be 25%. So the genotypes that would produce a mouse with a black coat would be big B, big B, and big B, little b. Since black is dominant, any box that has a dominant allele is going to show the dominant trait. And the probability of an offspring having a black coat would be three fourths because three of the boxes have the dominant allele. So that's why it would be three fourths. The genotype that would produce a mouse with a white coat is little b, little b because white is recessive. So the only way we're going to see a recessive phenotype is if we have two little letters. And the probability of an offspring having a white coat, only one of our four boxes shows that recessive. And so the probability would be one fourth. So then probability wise, what is more likely? to have offspring with a black coat or offspring with a white coat? Well, if we look at our boxes, we have more boxes that are showing the possibility of being dominant and having a black coat than being recessive and having a white coat. So there is a higher chance of our offspring having a black coat. It's actually 75% and only a one fourth probability or 25% probability of having recessive. Is it possible for these parents to have six offspring that all have black coats? Yes, it's entirely possible. But is it probable for these parents to have six offspring that all have black coats? No, it's not probable because we would expect three fourths of them black and one fourth of them white. So that's an example where we have our probability of what we expect, but actual results could be different. So here is a little bit more of a complex problem. It says, what is the probability of having offspring with the following genotypes all at once? So we want four baby mice to be born. One is heterozygous, big B, little b. One is homozygous recessive, little b, little b. One is homozygous dominant, big B, big B. And another is homozygous dominant, big B, big B. So we first have to determine the individual probabilities. So looking at the Punnett square, the probability of big B, little b is one half. The probability of little b, little b is one fourth. The probability of big B, big B is one fourth. And the probability of big B, big B is one fourth. Now, since we want them all at the same time, that means we multiply those probabilities together. And so if we multiply the top numbers, one times one times one times one, that gives us one. And if we multiply the bottom numbers, two times four times four times four gives us 128. So is it very probable to have four mice with those genotypes? No. One out of 128 is a pretty small probability. Our next problem is asking, what is the probability of having offspring in this particular order? We want the first one white, the second one black, the third one black, and the final one black. So like the last one, we first determine the individual probabilities using our Punnett square. So probability of white is one fourth, Black is three-fourths, black is three-fourths, and black is three-fourths. 
So just like last time, we multiply all those probabilities together since we want them in that exact order. And so if we multiply the top numbers, one times three times three times three is 27. And the bottom numbers, four times four times four times four is 256. So is it very probable to have mice in that exact order? No. Again, 27 out of 256 is a very small probability. So now looking at some human probability problems. In humans, we have sex chromosomes that determine our gender. In males, the sex chromosomes are X and Y. And in females, the sex chromosomes are XX. So on our Punnett square, I've placed those chromosomes to show how we can do use a Punnett square for this. And I've drawn egg and sperm just so that we can see the female and the male more clearly. When you do things like this, you do not have to draw egg and sperm. So if we fill in the boxes of the Punnett square, we see what results we can have. And there's a 50% probability that we'll get a girl, and there's a 50% probability that we'll get a boy. Now what's interesting is we can also determine which parent determines the gender. Females only give X's to their offspring. So every single person has gotten an X chromosome from their mother. So what determines your gender is actually the father's sperm. Half of the father's sperm have an X, half of the father's sperm have a Y. So if an X sperm fertilizes an egg, that's a female. If a Y sperm fertilizes an egg, then that's a male. So now probabilities based on this Punnett square. First, like we said, the probability of having a girl is one half or 50%. The probability of having three girls in a row is like one of those mouse problems we just completed. We want three girls all at the same time, which means we have to multiply individual probabilities. So that means we're gonna take one half times one half times one half. So one times one times one is one. Two times two times two is eight. So what's the probability that the next child will be a girl? This is a trick question. It's asking about one individual child that will be born next. It is not saying, what's the probability of having four girls? And since we're talking about one individual child, it doesn't matter what's happened previously. All we care about is this one individual. So the probability would be one half. Now, if we ask the question, what is the probability of having four girls in a row? Then we would do the multiplication again. We would have to take one half times one half times one half times one half. One times one times one times one is one. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. All right, so now we're going to look at a couple of random Punnett square practice problems. So for these problems, we're going to use the tongue rolling trait. Tongue rolling is dominant, and not rolling the tongue is recessive. And we're going to use the letters big R and little r. So first, we need to cross a heterozygote and a homozygous recessive. Heterozygote is big R, little r. Homozygous recessive is little r, little r. And there you can see our completed Punnett square. Here, this is showing the three different ways of showing probabilities from these results. You can see how we would record fraction probabilities, how we would record percentage probabilities, and how we would record ratio probabilities. Next problem, we're still using the tongue rolling trait. 
but this time we're going to cross a homozygous dominant with a hybrid. Homozygous dominant would be big R, big R. Hybrid is big R, little r, so you can see the completed Punnett square. And once again, here is how we would record probabilities in all three different ways. You can see the fraction probabilities, the percentage probabilities, and the ratio probabilities. And don't forget, if there's ever a zero when you're figuring out the ratio probabilities, you have to use that zero as a placeholder. And here's one more. A couple that both have dimples are heterozygous for the trait. They have three children with dimples and are expecting a fourth child. The mother insists that the child she is carrying will not have dimples. So here are some questions we want to determine from that information. So first we need to draw a Punnett square of two parents that are heterozygous. That's big D, little d for each parent. And then the first question is, is dimples dominant or recessive? It never told us in the information we were given. But what it did tell us is that both parents are heterozygous and they had dimples. Heterozygous means that they're showing the dominant trait and they have dimples. So that means dimples is dominant. What is the probability of having a child with dimples? Since dimples is dominant, there is a three fourths or 75% chance because three of our four boxes show the dominant allele. What is the probability of having a child without dimples? That is going to be one fourth or 25% because one of our four boxes shows the recessive. And then finally, is the mother right? She says because they already have three kids with dimples that this last kid will not have dimples. And mom, she's not right. Probability is random and starts over with each new event. It is not accumulative. What that means is a Punnett square isn't a checklist. You can't say, well, I've got three dominants, so cross off those boxes, so my next kid has to be recessive. There's actually a larger chance that this kid she's having is going to have dimples because each child has their own probability. So there's a 75% chance that this fourth kid will have dimples and a one fourth percent or one fourth probability, 25% chance that he won't. And then this problem, here are the three different ways of expressing the probabilities, fraction, percent, and ratio. 